Watch you guys today. We're taking a look at the Minis Forum Elite Mini TH60. They also do another version, which is the i7 version, but this is the i5 version. This is exactly what you're going to get if you purchase one. You're going to get your user manual, which will tell you all about uh, the unit itself and how to set it up. Pretty straightforward stuff. You've got a HDMI cable on here, and uh, this one is just the standard HDMI. Pretty short. And you've got your uh, back panel here to mount it onto a monitor or onto a wall or wherever you want to mount yours. You've got your plug, which is just your standard kettle lead, which means if the actual uh, power brick breaks, you can always replace it with a new kettle lead and a new power brick because it has a barrel uh, connector on here. And you can pick these up pretty cheap if you needed to replace this at any time. But as there's the specs on there for the actual power brick itself. As I've said, barrel connector on the end. So let's take a look at the mini PC itself. Quite a stylish looking mini PC. Not the smallest ones on the market. This is a, a larger size, but it does have a USB-C on the front 4K at 60 hertz in the front there. USB 3.2 and Gen 2 uh, port there. Also headphone and microphone input. And the power light is on the front there as well. On the side here, we have some ventilation and exhaust area here on the other side we have another exhaust area probably for the graphics on here to let the heat come out and on the rear let's take a look at the rear of it so on the rear we do have a clear cmos also a power button we also have a 19 volt input here we have hdmi 4k at 60 hertz display port 4k at 60 hertz four usb 3.2 uh gen 2 ports here rg45 which is your ethernet port 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on the back here we also have our microphone input here and we also have our audio input which is your green and pink type of inputs for your audio and your microphone and we have our kensington lock on the back here as well so probably everything you're going to need for a mini pc super slimline and super stylish looking mini PC. I do like the look of this. Now, the pre-sale of this is $479. That is for the i5 version with the 11 400H version, 16 gig of RAM and the 512 gigabyte SSD. This is the version that I've got here, but they do an i7 version as well. You've got a bare bones version and you can go for a smaller uh, SSD and also eight gigabytes of RAM if you wish. So the specs are the i5 11th gen 400H processor, 6 cores, 12 threads, 12 meg cache, up to 4.5 gigahertz. We have the GPU in here, which is the VHD graphics for the 11th gen processor, uh, running at 1.45 gigahertz. We have DDR4 dual channel memory in here. This has 16 gigs, but you can go up to 64 gigabytes on this one. So pretty decent. And also we have storage M.2. 2280 NVMe PCI Express times 4 SSD up to 2 terabytes can be put into there. Does have the M.2 2280 NVMe PCI Express times 4 slot on there. Does come with dual Wi Fi and Bluetooth. The internal look of the unit is like this here. It's held on with a plastic part on the bottom, which you have to remove to get access to the screws, and then you can remove it. And you can see the fan there. You've got your RAM in there, and also you've got your two M.2s on there as well, and the motherboard. So pretty nice layout. Uh, if you want to see a complete teardown, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to make that video for you. Let's take a quick look at the BIOS here. This is the BIOS for the actual PC. You can see TH60. And again, this one uh, shows you an information here of what's actually inside the system. I'm just going to quickly take a look at the CPU area here to see if it's unlocked and you can make changes to it so i'm going to go into the cpu configuration here and you can see we have cpu flex ratio settings we also have cpu uh, flex ratio override and if which is disabled so that should give me access to that area there uh, and that's pretty much it so there is the settings for the actual uh, cpu and again there's some other settings inside here so it does give you access to the bios as well and uh, I'm not sure if you can overclock this. I need to check. I'm pretty sure you could. Uh, but again, let's take a look at the Cinebench scores here. So this is on the multi-core. Temperatures were really, really good, as you can see on the screen here. And uh, no thermal throttling on this. And there's the score on the board. 7,689 points. Pretty impressive. 
and uh, we'll do a single core as well. But the temperatures were very good on the multi-core. They didn't go above 80, which is pretty good. So I'm going to do a single core uh, test here, and we'll see what the benchmarks are for this. And you can see the scores there. 1,423 points, which is pretty good for a mini PC. Temperature's very good as well. No thermal throttling. And as you've seen on other tests on other mini PCs, they normally have temperature issues and thermal throttling. But I can safely say on this one, it hasn't had any issues. So let's take a look at the sequential reads and writes for the drive. And we'll quickly run this. And you can see the stats on the screen here. 4K 601.16 for reads and writes are 710. Now we're going to do the Night Raid uh, benchmark. This is for the GPU. And you can see 6,306 points for that, which is pretty nice as well for the GPU. Remember, this is onboard graphics. This is using the Ultra HD graphics for the 11th gen processors. But plenty of powerful for gaming, for Photoshop, and other applications that you might want to use, especially with that i5 uh, CPU with the six cores and 12 threads. It's a pretty powerful little system. And uh, again, it's going to be able to game. It's going to be able to do your little video editing, Photoshop, and all of your Plex servers. You can see 4K quad full HD 3840 by 2160 at 60 FPS. And this is streaming no problem at all. Jellyfish 140 Mbps. And again, this is a 10 bit and I can skip this and it shouldn't miss a heartbeat here. It should be able to handle this. No problem at all. There we go. So super powerful uh, little mini PC can do all of your uh, movie selection as well. Bit of gaming here for you as well. If you want to do some gaming, you can do on this little system. Temps worked out pretty well. No major problems like thermal throttling or anything like that. Again, just remember it is a mini PC and it's going to have some limitations to it when it comes to gaming because it's not going to be able to replace a desktop computer for full-on hardcore gaming. But it can handle games. These are off the uh, you know Microsoft Store and you can play some other games, I'm pretty sure, on this as well. I'm not going to spend too much time uh, doing all of the games. I'll show you some emulation as well for PSP so you can see that it is pretty much uh, silky smooth here. No problems whatsoever. Not having no issues here. And uh, pretty impressed with this little mini PC. It does look pretty stylish as well. So it's going to look really nice on your desk. bit larger than the average uh, size of uh, mini PC. It's a bit more streamlined. But we're going to be using Vulcan here for PSP. And I'm pretty sure this little system is going to be able to handle some of the specifications in here. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put the V-Sync on to cap it at 60 FPS. And I'll come down here uh, for upscale level, and we'll go to on, and we'll turn this to maybe times four or something like that. Give it a times four first to see whether it can handle times four. And this is pretty much CPU heavy, so it's going to tax the system a little bit, but I want to see whether it can handle this sort of performance from uh, this little machine here. And we'll test Chains of Olympus here to see whether it can handle it. And you can see here it's locked at 60 FPS. It's not even having any issues whatsoever with this, even at that times four, which is pretty impressive for a little mini PC here. So it can handle all your uh, retro games and stuff like that and emulation. So that is the Minis Forum Elite Mini TH60, and they do a TH80 with an i7 in there as well. If you're interested, I'll leave the links in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.